I've done. Welcome to worship. Thanks for coming out on this less cold than yesterday day. Special welcome to anyone who's visiting today. Good to have you. We have a few special, extra special guests. Christopher will introduce them. Uh, before we begin our service, just a couple announcements. I'll invite Roger forward for one. Nice haircut, Roger, by the way. There you go. Um, if you, you've been seeing in church at work that Joan McIsaac and I are going to lead a book study um, starting the end of uh, the very first of February. And if you haven't let me know that you want to do that, please do. We'd really like an RSVP so we can plan on exactly how many wonderful folks are coming to study the book called Thriving Churches. And just look at, uh, this is all focused on United Church of Canada experiences, churches that are doing innovative, creative things, both pre-pandemic and during the pandemic. In our conversation, who knows where it will go? So let me know if you're going to join the book study. Roger. I guess my hair was long enough that it was really noticeable. <laughs> um, just letting everybody know that, uh, this second announcement for our annual general meeting next Sunday, the 12th of February. Uh, we're having it after <laughs> the 10 o'clock service, and uh, we're going to have a shortened service at that time. And then the kids are going to have our Sunday school lesson that's a little shorter, and they're going to join us in the sanctuary. Uh, everyone's welcome, uh, members, adherents. Children all come along, and uh, the other thing is there's copies of the report in the front entry. And if you want an electronic copy, uh, just contact the office and the name so copy that. Uh, read the report uh, and have your questions ready for us next week. And that was a short meeting, I hope we'll be a little bit less. And see you next time. Oh, and we're going to have refreshments after this, yeah, during the, the annual meeting. So. <laughs> All right, thanks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Christopher. Well, my name is Christopher Wilson, and I am the music director here at St. Luke's. If I don't know you, I think I know most people. I haven't met you yet. Good morning. Uh, I'm also very happy to be the chair of the firm. Um, I said this last week, I don't mean to dwell on it, it's just I'm trying to gauge my voice. I'm still struggling with some hearing loss, so if I yell, just don't. Uh, I wanted to take this opportunity just to share a little bit about today. So, since the spring of this past year, St. Louis United Church's Affirming Committee has been engaging in passionate, emotional, and discerning conversations together. Uh, through the United Church of Canada's Affirming Ministries program, which is a program focused predominantly on the intention to be fully inclusive of people of all sexual orientations and gender identities. We, representing the community of St. Luke's United Church, are highly conscious that our language be inclusive of all people who may choose to cross the threshold of our beautiful Christian community. At this point, I won't make you stand up, but give me a wave. I will uh, introduce our affirming committee, which in alphabetical order includes Ms. Sue Bootlayer, uh, Ms. Jane Earl. Mr. Rick Gunn, the Rev, Miss M.J. Lane, Miss Diane Murdoch, Mr. Ian Lee, and myself, and Sarah, how very dare I, where are you, Sarah? How dare I, with those beautiful earrings. In consult with uh, our coordinator of the Affirming Ministry Programs for Atlantic Canada in Quebec, by the name of Reverend Kim Curlitz, uh, we drafted a new mission statement and a vision statement, which was on a piece of paper that you were given today, and I understand it's also eventually going to be on the slide behind me. So on Tuesday, December 6th, the motion was put forth by the council, uh, moved by Mr. Ian Reed and MJ Lang, and these statements were approved. I just thought I'd take this opportunity, even though you can read them both on the page in front of you, which we invite you to take home in advance of our conversation. I'd like to read this about. In fact, um, part of our process was uh, I invited the team. There's something very different that's received in an oral context when you auditorily, when you listen to it, versus when you 
St. Luke's aspires to be a thriving Christian family that publicly, intentionally, and explicitly embraces everyone unconditionally, including all colors, ethnicities, gender identities and expressions, sexual orientations, ages, abilities, and socioeconomic status in the full participation of all areas of our ministry. We commit to exploring inclusivity and consciously welcome all those that see hope, peace, love, and a spiritual life. As part of this affirming process, which is what brings us to today and the wonderful things that are happening today, we, the committee, are striving to engage you, the congregation of St. Luke's, in two affirming focus worships. The first one today. The second one will be on uh, March 12th, which is our High Day celebration. And these services are designed to provide education for you, the congregation, and informal opportunities for discussion. Henceforth, the lovely circles. So I, I'm glad that you've taken it upon yourself if you can't see the front. This is going to be your little calisthenics for the day. Move your chair. Move your chair that way. I see you've already got it going on down here, which is great. So you're going to be hearing personal stories within the ministry in the community. You're going to be, um, we're going to be discussing modern theological understandings of scriptures, which for years and still today have been used to discriminate. We're hearing from affirming ministries that impact the decision uh, that is had on their ministry, discussing what it might mean for you, and hearing and discussing social justice aspects about what it is to become an affirming community. Having said that, I would like to introduce our first guest today, who is the uh, fabulous and wonderful Mr. Ross. Ross, your last name is, wait, I've got it. I know you're there. We cuddled. Just want to be that professional guy. What's your last name? Ross, <laughs> Ross Sherwood. Ross uh, is an old friend of Rick's. They've known each other for about 20 years plus. And Ross is joining us from uh, Westfield United Church in Westfield, New Brunswick. Uh, they braved uh, dire climate and snow, snow and things to join us. So we're very grateful they arrived. Uh, Rick and uh, Ross originally met at the Maritime Conference Youth Forum. And Ross will be sharing a bit more about himself personally later on in the service. Uh, I guess that's it. Thank you. I invite you to extend your hands like so. And we've sung this in church a few times, so this might ring a bell. I'm just going to use this to center us. Um, you're going to go, take, oh, take me as I am, and bring your hands together to do that. Take, oh, take me as I am. And then you're going to... Oh, 
Rainbow is already beaming here at St. Luke's. We're going to do a little thing that might require a little courage. It might not. I'm going to use the word queer, which does refer to anyone who's gay or lesbian or trans or bi. Yes, queer used to be a derogatory term, but the community has reclaimed it. And it is our word to use with love and celebration. So when I say the word queer, it means trans, bi, gay, lesbian. I invite the choir and the congregation to raise your hand if you have a queer person in your family. Take a look around. Or you can lower your hand. I invite you to raise your hand if the person who is queer in your family is your child or your grandchild. Take a look around. You lower your hand. Raise your hand if you have a queer friend or colleague, co-worker, neighbor. Awesome. Raise your hand if you are queer yourself. And we just take a moment to quiet in case there was someone who didn't have the courage to raise their hand there. And that's okay. Everyone's on their own journey. Maybe if you know there's a queer person in your family, you thought, but I'm not going to raise my hand. I don't want people to know that. That's sometimes the place we are still in. So let's just take a moment of quiet prayer to recognize that some folks weren't ready to raise their hand, and that's okay. Thank you. I'm going to invite our committee forward and we're going to cover that cross in rainbow. Some of you will know that we have used rainbow ribbons in worship before. Today's liturgy will add more colors, representing the additional colors that are used on what is called Progress Pride Flag, created in 2018 by Daniel Fozal. You see the flag over there. Let's learn about the colors and open our hearts in prayer. My ribbon committee is furiously unfurling the beautiful colors of the rainbow to get it ready. Do you have red at the ready, my darling? I said, do you have red at the ready? The red in the pride flag represents life. We lift this ribbon to celebrate the life of all people and also to mourn the ways that the fullness of life has been denied to members of the queer community and to people of color. The orange in the pride flag represents healing. As we lift this ribbon, we pray for healing for all people who have been harmed because of homophobia, 
transphobia and racism. The yellow in the pride flag represents sunlight and new ideas. We lift this ribbon as we recommit ourselves to our affirming journey, to always seek new ways to affirm the belovedness of all people. The green in the pride flag represents nature and growth. As we lift this ribbon, we remember that the community of creation includes more than just humans. We are called to be in community not only with each other, but with the whole world. The blue in the pride flag represents serenity and harmony. We lift this ribbon and pray that all people might live in serenity and peace, both inside and out. The purple in the pride flag represents spirit. We lift this ribbon, acknowledging that our spirits are connected with the holy mystery who we name as God. The black and brown in the progress flag represents people of color. We lift these ribbons to give thanks for the African American queer people who were instrumental in starting the pride movement. Their courage lives on in these colors. The white, pink, and blue represents trans community, those who people, those who gen whose gender is fluid, and those for whom there are no words yet to describe them. We lift these ribbons and pray that God opens our hearts beyond the ways we think men and women, boys and girls, should be. We light our Christ candle as a reminder that Jesus of Nazareth was a person of color. He broke down barriers between people in all his risen life, male and female, Jew and Greek, slave and free, were no more. His light holds all the colors of the rainbow. All are one. pray. Spirit of life, as we sing, listen, share, and pray, may it be your vision and hope for humanity that guides us. Bless our affirming service so your love might break into our lives even more. Help us to truly love all people as you do. Amen.
Come on over to the fun corner. Morning, everybody. And just everyone, you can actually look at the screen. I have a book for you today, but it's all going to be on the screen. And Phil, thanks for doing the slide. Some of the screens don't have any words, so we'll just let the picture sit for a minute before we go on. But let's, this book is called Julian is a Mermaid. You see the cover there? What's Julian got on his head? Flowers, what else? A bird. What's Julian got around his waist? Looks like a blanket or something. Well, let's read the story and figure it out. First slide, Phil. This is a boy named Julian. And this is his abuela, which means grandmother. And those are some mermaids. Through the window there, you see some women dressed in beautiful clothes and long, colorful hair. Next to Julian loves mermaids. So just taking that picture for a moment. You can see Julian on the bus watching the mermaids. Next. Now, what do you think Julian's doing? There's three images of Julian here. Next picture. Here he is again. What's happening to his hair? He's imagining he's in the water. What, and what's going on with the hair? Flying, growing, little fish swimming around him. I wonder what he's imagining. Next. Whoa, his imagination's going wild. Swirling with color and fish and his hair is long. Next. Uh-oh, what's happening now to Julian and his imagination? He's turning. Next. A mystical kind of fish. What, what an imagination he has. Next. And this says at the bottom, Vamonos, Miko, which means, come on, my darling. This is our stop. The mermaids wave to them goodbye as they leave the subject. And off they go with her. The grandmother and uh, Julian. Next. Abuela, did you see the mermaids? I saw them, Miko. And they get home and she says, I'm going to take a bath. You be good. And this is what Julian does when his abuela is in the bath. Julian has a good idea. Takes off his shirt, takes off the shorts. And what happens next, Phil? Oh, he's going to the fern. You were right, Olive. It was a fern. Puts it on his head, goes to the dresser. What's he do with the flowers? Puts them in his hair. And what's he doing in that last picture in the mirror? Putting some makeup on. Now he's looking at that drafty curtain thing. Next. What's that curtain? It's a curtain. And what's he doing with the curtain? Wrapped it around his waist. Looks like a man. Next. And here comes his grandmother. And she says, Oh! Look at her face. And here she says, Oh! He says, uh-oh, now look at his face. 
So she's going off to do something. What's next, Phil? Oh, there he's thinking. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Next. Come here, mijo. Look at her face there. For me, abuela? For you, Julian. What does she have in her... Oh, go back, please. What does she have in her hand? She wasn't mad at all. What's next? They go off hand in hand, outdoors it looks like, and Julian gets to stay dressed up like an angel. Next. Where are we going? Julian says to his abuela. You'll see, says abuela. Mermaids, whispered Julian. All around the movies, folks dressed up like mermaids to me. Well, go back. Like you, Neil, let's join the mermaids. Next. And they do. She wants to be a mermaid. What? <laughs> there he is. Here. Why do you think he's a boy that gave him pearls to wear? Any thoughts? Yes. It's maybe mermaids often wear pearls. What did you think of her reaction? Yeah, the book made us think maybe she's going to be mad that her grandson was stressing up in kind of a different way for many boys. Do you have any friends or know anyone at school that kind of is really special and unique and they dress their own way? Yeah, <laughs> well, I just give thanks for this wonderful book and maybe I'll, I'll say a little prayer, invite everyone to repeat after me. So close your eyes and let us pray. Loving God, Thank you for this book. And thank you for Julia, who's a special boy who loves me. And thank you for his imagination. And we thank you for that. Ah, right. Something he wanted to do. And we thank you for his abuela. Who showed that it's okay to be a different kind of boy. Help us, God, to have courage to always be ourselves and to be welcoming of all. Um, thanks, everybody. I think you're going to stay in the service with us. Can we have another song? Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Uh, stand as you are able, please, and joining us in sticking colors on the side.
Our sacred reading today is from a letter of St. Paul to the people of Corinth. Corinth was a busy urban metropolis along the Mediterranean Sea. The people were pulled in many directions. How could they follow this new religious movement, movement not yet even called Christianity, while being a Roman colony and coming from a very different spiritual and cultural tradition? Listen for how Paul tries to unite his readers across the For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. The whole body were an eye. Where would the hearing go? If the whole body were hearing, As it is, God arranged the members of the body, in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. And I cannot say to man, sharing. I believe it is the spirit working through me. I'm just the body that delivers it. And I also want to share that I am blessed to be part of a church, my home church, Westfield United Church, part of Two Rivers Pastoral Charge that became affirming six years, almost six years ago. I'd like to introduce Joel McElhaney. You'll notice over there on the piano. Um, Joel is my partner and he'll be sharing some music during this reflection. And the piece of the music that we chose, um, and I asked Joel why, why are you, your thoughts on these pieces of music? The first one is Oceans, and it speaks of how we need to always lean to God to keep above the waves, to keep from drowning, and that becoming affirming is to move to uncharted waters where God is calling us to the waters of acceptance and to always trust without borders. Second piece is It Is Well by Kristen DeMarco. And it speaks of the seas that stirred in our lives, which with God can be calmed, and that the mountains in front of us can be the hatred and the intolerance that some people still foster. But through it all, with our eyes focused on God, it is well. And the third piece is Your Great Name by Natalie Grant. 
And really for me, the song just sums it up. Your great name is just about God and God is love. As Christopher mentioned, my name is Ross Sherwood. I, a little bit about me, I work in Fredericton, live in St. John. And I work as a licensed optician in the optical industry and I've been there for the last 34 years working. Currently active, lifelong member of Westfield United Church. Sitting as official board chair, mission and service enthusiast, youth connection leader, and a lay preacher. I've been blessed to travel on many mission trips and vision clinics with my work throughout Europe, Africa, Asia, South and Central America, and throughout North America, and spent 17 years with Maritime Conference Youth Forum, and it's good to see Kevin, Megan, who are here. They bring back so many memories of times together, Rick, of course, with the youth. But I also recently joined the Affirm Committee with uh, Fundy, St. Lawrence, Donning Waters Region, which is New Brunswick PEI and the Gas Bay. But it wasn't until my 50th year that I shared, so back in 2018, that I shared with my family, with my friends and my church about my sexuality. I lived a single life. 16 years ago, adopted Patrick, an 11-year-old boy, who was my pride and joy. But I lived with my sexuality internally as I just wanted to live a life of giving back, serving people, and doing my best to follow the path that God created for me. And I had no regrets. But after my church became affirming, this gave me the complete assurance that I would not be rejected. And I started thinking that maybe it was my time to live my true, authentic life. And as I mentioned in 2018, I shared with those who were closest to me. And from there, I have not looked back. Did I mention how thankful I am to be part of a church that went from welcoming to affirming? A welcoming community to an affirming community. That reminds me of the word pi that we will be celebrating, you'll be celebrating here, of being public, being intentional, and being explicit. Today I would like to share a reflection, a reflection I created last spring for our region's annual meeting. And I, I changed it a little bit because since that time I have realized that even though our national church is affirming, our regions are affirming. Not every United Church is affirming. In fact, there are still some in Canada that practice conversion therapy. So when we think of ourselves as a national church, and we're affirming, we think that the United Church right across the board is affirming. No, this is why you are taking the steps to become public, to become intentional, and to become explicit. So let us pray. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. A while back, I was sitting reading an article online, welcoming but not affirming. Being Gay and Christian posted in August of 2016. This was shortly after my church began a year-long process of planting seeds, asking questions, sharing and working towards understanding just what it means to become affirming. This article is a conversation back and forth from the perspectives of a gay Christian and the leader of a church. I won't get into the whole article, but I would like to share some of the comments from the leader and the gay Christian. The leader says, at the moment, our position is that if you're going to volunteer here, that we would hold to a fairly orthodox position of scripture. So yeah, we do have a line. And that line is drawing to just being a member of the church. But because you're gay, you're not able to take part in any leadership positions. And the gay Christian thinks, imagine, I'm not allowed to take up the offering. I was simply looking to be actively involved and become a member of a church. But because I'm gay, that was sufficient for them to turn around and say no? I thought to myself, it's just not right. And the leader says, being part of a Christian community is the body. 
Everyone's got a part and a role to play. Oh, but you're gay? You can't do that anymore. The gay Christian thinks, I grew up in a church. Understanding that God created me and loved me for who I am. But when I shared about with my church that I'm in a same-sex relationship, I was told that I had to step aside, step away from the duties at the church, forcing me to leave, feeling so bad because for me, it was my space to belong. All of my formation happened at church. That's just not right. And the gay Christian continues to think there really is no respect in staying inside a community that holds up a banner saying, welcome home, while simultaneously rejecting your very presence by silence. Silence was like thunder to me. Imagine being part of a church that does not accept you for who God created you to be. Affirming Ministries seeks to go beyond issues of gender diversity, sexual orientation, to work for justice and inclusion for all people. In June, as I mentioned, in June of 2017, I'm so very proud to say that Two Rivers Pastoral Charge, my church, voted unanimously in favor of becoming an affirming community. Through the process of discernment and reflection, Affirming Ministries discovers what it means for them to be inclusive and justice-seeking. They prepare a statement of faith you've all been working on, and a vision that sets out their ongoing commitment to work for justice on issues of gender diversity, sexual orientation, within their congregation, the wider church, and their community, and to support and participate in, an affirm in affirming ministries programs. Shortly after becoming affirming, Two Rivers created and adopted our inclusivity statement. It says, we the people of Two Rivers Pastoral Charge publicly declare our commitment to create a community that will celebrate the blessings of and the support of one another in our diverse life experiences. A community where all people are welcoming regardless of age, gender, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, differing abilities, ethnic background, life experiences, generational culture, economic circumstances, and others we have yet to discern. As such, we will continually seek to identify and dismantle barriers that hinder the participation and inclusion of marginalized groups and individuals. All persons are welcome to take part in every aspect of church, of the church life, including memberships, leadership, celebrating life's passages, and marriage. We will celebrate the richness that diversity brings to our church, even as it challenges us. We pray for God's Spirit to guide us as we work for reconciliation and justice for all persons in church and society. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't mean, okay, that's done. Sharing from Open Hearts, a resource for affirming ministries in the United Church of Canada. And it says, it is more than offering a welcome. Being an affirming ministry is not merely about welcoming gay, lesbian, transgender people. Words like welcoming or inclusion suggest that those on the inside have the power to choose and accept those on the outside. This makes it sound like an act of charity to welcome those who are different or marginalized. However, it is not, and I don't believe it's our place to welcome anyone because church is not a private club and we are not the gatekeepers. As soon as one person comes through this door, one new, new person comes through this door, the community becomes a new community. I reached out to some members of my church to ask their thoughts on what it feels like to become an affirming church. What does it feel like now, five years later? What has changed and what are the challenges? And Betty shares, 
I believe it has brought our three congregations closer together. I think we are living out what God wants us to be, more welcoming, more understanding, and to show love to all people. Two Rivers has always been welcoming churches. I remember the first time I walked through the door at Somerville. It just felt so right. The education during our time of becoming a firming congregation was well done. It gave everyone valuable information and freedom of voting. As Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. My cousin Chris shares, I related a lot to my call to share the good news about God, Jesus, and about faith. I like to think that myself, my faith, and my church function and live to help bring others closer to God, closer to their own faith, to help others discover that God is with us and God loves us and that God is love. This house of God, Two Rivers Pastoral Charge, is love, is support, is caring, and is holy. And that makes me, and that, and that makes me think that thanks to being affirming, others are discovering this as well. I get emotional when I hear the stories from others about when they see the signs of welcome and affirmation on our website or outside our churches. How for some who in the past have always felt they felt unwelcome or unloved by churches, now know with certainty that this house of God welcomes, supports, and loves them. This is being high, public, intentional, explicit. God loves us no matter who we love. God just wants us to love. As Jesus reminds us, the most important of all the commandments is to love God and love each other. My friend Josie shares, I think we are now a much more open pastoral charge. I believe we voted to become an affirming charge thinking that we were reaching out to those that do not sit in our pews. And indeed we were, but, she shares, I have noticed so many changes within our charge. We are more open, more welcoming with ourselves. Many people have since shared their own stories, mine included. When I realized, as I said, that our church did become affirming, maybe it was that nudge that gave me the realization that I would be fully accepted. I feel strongly that when jo stories are shared, that there is acceptance of the story itself, of the feelings of the stor storyteller, and of the subjects of the story. And love, she says, there has always been love in our pastoral charge, but I feel now that it has grown even bigger, even stronger, and we are loving the love that has changed us and embraced us. I believe that becoming the affirming charge, we have given ourselves a voice, a quietly strong one that we can draw upon when we find ourselves in social situations where others question what the rainbow signage at each of our churches means. And she says, I had the opportunity to do just that. She says the hard, perhaps challenging part for her personally is when she encounters people who do not think like she does, or when jokes about others are said, or when derogatory names are used to describe. She says that she's always avoided the confrontation at all costs and kept quiet. But don't you think that's making them think that we're agreeing with them? And she now says, I feel I have that voice. And as much as it is, it's hard to share sometimes. She says, I do it, and I feel I do it with love now. As 1 Corinthians 12.12 12 says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. We are all created in God's image. God created each of us for who we are, no matter our age, our race, sexual orientation, gender identity, differing abilities, or our ethnic background, our life experience, or generational culture. God loves us for who we are. God does not judge, nor does God expect us to judge. 
for to know God is to know love. My minister, Reverend Kate, shared during a reflection, and I quote, being affirming is a journey. It is not a destination. It's not something Two Rivers did back in 2017. It is something that is an ongoing commitment to be willing to have our barriers broken down. It isn't always going to be easy. As our inclusivity statement reads, we celebrate the richness that diversity brings to our church, even as it challenges us. There is no tension between the celebration and the challenge. God is always pushing us beyond our comfort zone, pushing us into broader, to a broader understanding of love and acceptance. For God's love isn't just for the in crowd. God's love is for everyone. And who are we to stand in God's way? So for me as a man of faith who is gay, I feel so very blessed to call Two Rivers Pastoral Charge within the region of the Funday St. Lawrence Donning Waters under the umbrella of the United Church, my home, my church, my family. Amen. landed in my heart. Uh, now is the Sunday school portion of your <laughs> of your service when we're going to ask you to reflect a little bit. So um, does each of our groups have a committee member? I'm going to ask our committee members to sort of join a circle group and be our recording secretaries. 
If you need a pencil, there's some over there in the kids' corner. And I have a few questions for you to reflect on. The first one is, share with each other something you appreciated about Ross's message. So just take a few minutes to close that. <laughs> All right, folks. Can I bring you back now? <laughs> Perhaps we could hear from our uh, affirming team members from your group. Uh, what's, uh, what was something that really hit home for you with Ro in Ross's message? Yes. So in my uh, table group, circle group, from Ross's message, we appreciated uh, the personal, the, your personal story and the courage it must have taken to come out so much later in life. So thank you for your courage. And hearing the personal side of things made affirming feel um, like uh, the affirming is much more being intrinsically changed by the work we're doing. The work of affirming is very internal. Uh, journey, and they appreciated that the, it's a destination, it's a journey, not a destination. And it's continuing conversation. The language of queerness and racism will be changing and growing. And so we're, we're never going to get there. We just live in it. Um, and you made it very simple. You kind of broke it down. It was easy to digest. So thank you. Our, our group certainly uh, appreciated the sincerity uh, and the depth of that, of that message. I think we, we mo did note the, in particular, the sense that um, we are not here. We do not welcome people because we're charitable and nice people. We welcome people with the, not at the gate because we are gatekeepers uh, or, or judges, but the gate is wide open. And that was a very poignant uh, message. Yeah. Please note also that as you're sharing, there's probably going to be doubling up a bit. So please don't be, still share your viewpoint the way you share it. Uh, one thing we were excited about was highlighting the difference between being a welcoming church and an affirming church. Basically, welcoming isn't potentially enough. And uh, just from a historical standpoint, I was very grateful to learn from some uh, long time members of the uh, community here that they feel that there has been a conversation that's been going on for several years. There have been previous openly queer uh, people in ministry roles, and uh, that's exciting to me. Well, Christopher said with some doubling up, and our group certainly raised that issue around the difference that was made very clear about welcoming and uh, affirming, and being very clear that welcoming is complete welcome that you're not picking and choosing or judging. And another um, message was how open young people seem to be and how they're often now correcting we older people who grew up in a time of much greater stigma. I myself find the need, as you know I'm very extroverted, the need to um, dub down my curiosity around, and somebody else mentioned in my group, the curiosity and thinking, does it really matter? We're all one. Difference affirming, we're all people, all children of God. So do you have anything to add? That has to <laughs> um, well, I just have one thing to add. Oh. Okay, there. Um, yeah, one thing, uh, the personal story of Ross was something that was mentioned too, um, and the distinction between welcoming and affirming, um, and the journey, not the destination. But uh, somebody mentioned here that uh, when they came to the church, um, because of 
the way they were welcomed, they already thought it was an affirming church, which is kind huh. of a nice kind of, but we realize it is a journey and we're going to be on it. And the, also the comment that we have been really working on this for quite a while and it's just that it's now all started to come together. Joel. Um, thank you all for having us, by the way. Um, the, the thing that stuck out was the story of the, the young person who was asked to step down that really, that was not written about me at the time, but it actually was my experience. So when the question came up of why be affirming, uh, because not and conversion therapy is so harmful mm -hmm. to the mental health especially and well-being of people in the queer community. So that is very important from a holistic standpoint, um, just from a very mental health perspective and an accepting perspective. Um, we all yearn to be accept accepted. And uh, this community of all communities, the community that preaches love and Jesus Christ should be the most safe and affirming place. Um, and the visibility uh, and the community aspect are so important because we're living in a time where people feel very isolated and alone, especially coming out of a pandemic where we had to physically isolate. So I think it's more important than ever, and we all thought, you know, to really be intentional, explicit, and um, what's the other one? Public. Huh, there we right. go. Um, and we also highlighted the fact that welcoming and affirming are different. Actively affirming gives a safe place uh, to be your authentic self and welcoming doesn't necessarily do that because it doesn't actually get into the topic and have the conversation so the, the importance of actually having the conversations and, and talking about and using the words we're using the words gay and all these sort of things honesty came up as a very important thing um, you know because you might you might see in other circles where people are attending but they're this is my friend nudge nudge wink wink they can't actually express that they are partners or what have you so that is important and uh, someone mentioned that there's been a long-standing discussion happening within this community where things started to shift because conversations started to happen and now it's a more proactive approach. So that's what we came up with. Right, thank you, Joel. Next, what do you think it means to be an affirming church? Diane, did your group have any reflections on that one? It has to be completely uh, say, I would rather if, would one of you, one of the group here like to uh, comment on that? Thanks, um, Emily. We talked about how with this journey it's crucial to be not only loving but open-minded to new changes and that kind of this LGBTQ community, it's an ever evolving thing it's always flowing and changing so I think just being open-minded to change and being welcoming throughout the entire journey. Something from this circle here, Sue? Well, I, th I think we actually some of the comments I made were in answer to all the really three questions. Jay? Please feel free to reflect on any of those questions. What do you think it means to be affirming? Is being affirming important to you? And what questions do you have about being an affirming church? I think in our group, we respond to the general stuff that we've gotten to. Uh, but quite frankly, these are deep questions. And to have two seconds to run by them is very difficult. So um, We just need a quick synopsis. Yes. Well, in, es in essence, we had a really good discussion. And Excellent. I hope it moved some of us on, and some people are already there. And I guess we're feeling we're really getting a long way on the journey. Absolutely. Thank you, Jane. I guess I, I, can, I can try to sum up the last three questions. Uh, we all agreed that, that we are different places along this journey. Some of us uh, shared 
shared that we weren't quite on the same spot of this journey and it took a lot of courage to be able to say those things. It's much easier to just nod your head and say, oh, it's very nice, thank you. Uh, so what it reflected was that, that uh, uh, all of us need to be supported and encouraged and uh, accepted for wherever we are along this journey. Uh, uh, it's very easy for those of us who have spent hours on the affirming committee understanding and learning and debating and so on and we have very little opportunity some have had very little opportunity to to exchange thoughts so we have to be respectful and kind and gentle with all of us depending on where we are in the journey uh, but the, the I think there was there was no one who for example had any concerns about the mission and vision statements which pretty good that's a pretty important start. Thank you, Ian. And in my group, we reflected on how it's important if we're affirming to practice what we preach. Good to have the mission and vision statements, but those must come alive in how we live uh, with each other. And also that being affirming is a part of the puzzle. It's not everything St. Luke's does. We want affirming to be part of everything, but we also work on food justice. We also work on pastoral care. We also work on community outreach in different ways. So we hope affirming is part of our good ministries and the many things we do that is part of our sharing here. I wonder if anyone has any questions for our guest speaker, for Ross, as someone who's been affirming for some time. Christopher. Ross, what was that? Hesitant to go to the microphone with this No, no, no. <laughs> what was that pivotal moment in your personal experience when you were part of that community that you are so blessed to be a part of, where you were in the full realization of being affirmed within yourself first and foremost as a gay man, and then realizing that you were in a community? What did that, dare I say, that penny drop moment? Yeah. What, what did that yeah, feel like? for me. You know... 20 years of knowing Rick, some friends of youth form, a, a big part of the journey was the youth I met. I'm a 35, 40, 45 year old man, 50 year old man still involved with youth form, and I'm meeting kids that feel so much more confident in who they are than I am. Now, the difference is I grew up in the 70s and 80s playing a lot of, at that time, masculine sports. So knowing that you, you just can't be, right? The aha moment that I was sharing a minute ago was when we went through the journey as a church um, and I never wanted to hurt my mother. And growing up thinking this might hurt her, you know, if I'm not going to be the boy that gets married and has two children and lives this love, la, 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 la life, right, was six months in, five months in, whatever it was, and my mother calling me on a Sunday night, we're through the journey of affirmation. And she says, Ross, I, I'm, I'm, I gotta ask you, I'm struggling because the Bible says this, and she's a very biblical person. The Bible says this, but Elizabeth, who was our minister at the time, was kind of preaching like it's nuts. I said, Mom, I said, you are on your own journey. You are one person of our church, and God is trying to work and will work through you. So to watch the aha moment for me didn't happen like that. It happened through that year, watching my mother go from, I don't know, to, I believe. That was my aha moment. All right, friends. Thank you all so much for taking some time to reflect on this and being part of this important work. Ah. Oh. Yes. Lillian's uh Lillian has just offered a prayer shawl gifted Ross a prayer shawl on behalf of St. Luke's United. Thank you.
Let's sing as we receive our offering. First parts. <laughs> blessing. Cast your eyes upon the bounty here for the food bank. Thank you for remembering the food bank. And uh, it is the first Sunday of each month that we try to lift up, lift up that ministry. Let's pray together. God, we present an offering, gifts for the food bank, gifts for the church, gifts for mission and service. We trust that these items and the money will become good ministry around the world to heal, to celebrate, and to grow a world full of love and justice and welcome and peace. In the name of the Christ in whom we are centered, amen. Please be seated. Oh. <laughs> what can I do? What can I say? I know our, our service has gone a little longer today. and Thank you for being here and remaining as you can. If you need to be sneaking out, I know that might have to happen for a couple of you. Diane has a special prayer for us in the comfort and uh, a little about herself. 
before we wrap up our service. I saw a great raise of hands. Many, many of you have family, friends, and or co-workers who are gay or lesbian. So here's my story. I'm afraid I have to read a lot of it. CBC National Television launched, was launched in 1952. And in 1954, they created their costume department. I answered the ad for secretary in that department. And I landed the job. Couldn't believe my good fortune. I was in the midst of professional, brilliant costume designers who created, created marvelous showpieces. I worked easily and joyfully with many talented, funny, intelligent, proud gay people and black people. This diversity opened up my world. Sadly, as today, they were also subject to hate and violence. A few, great, a few years ago, my grandson told me he was going to transition to being my granddaughter, Lynn. I was prepared for an announcement that he would be gay, but transitioning made me nervous and very fearful for her. When I shared the news with my friends, they understood my fears and gave me full support. Lynn is busy with her master's degree in chemistry at Dalhousie University. My granddaughter, Christy, in Toronto, has two children, Nicholas and Ellie. Her wife, Kate, has a son who recently transformed to Anna. They are a very happy family. Also, I'm delighted that my granddaughter, Charlotte, and her fiance, Jade John, have announced their plans for marriage next year. That's my family, some of it. <laughs> Let us pray. Creative and loving God, Bless the good people of St. Luke's United Church as we continue on our journey to become an affirming church. You, God, always see into the deepest pieces of our heart. Help us to see and acknowledge each person we meet for who they are on the inside. Help us to appreciate that there are many kinds of personalities, intellect, and perspectives in people. <coughs> Help us to truly believe that being different is a gift, not a threat. We lament that many queer people and many people of color have suffered because of fear, bigotry, hatred, and lack of understanding. Yet, through such hardships, people have grown stronger and more courageous as they live out their true selves. For this we give thanks. God, we pray for our hearts to soften more and more so we may truly embrace all people. May we not be a roadblock to the happiness and well-being of others simply because we do not understand them. We give thanks for our affirming team, for our council who encourages our work, and for our guest speaker, Ross, and for each person here and the wisdom and love they bring. We pray all of this in the name of the risen Christ, whose spirit knows no boundaries, and who taught us to pray as one united voice of love. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, 
it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of the day, go ancient walls. stay for coffee and tea across in the uh, upper hall. Go in peace to love and serve, to be the light in every corner you go, and may God bless you this week. See you next week. Thank you.